Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All right, Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox. It is hopping. We'll ho hopefully get to those submissions a little bit later. But a reminder that all of our guests on this Wednesday are brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. Uh, and those guests include NHL analyst, hockey storyteller, John Shannon. He joins us now. John, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? Well, I, I'm doing okay. I, I'm worried about you three. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, listen, first of all, if Ryan needs some of my time this week, Ryan can have it. I mean, not to have Ryan, the Twitter, Ryan, the Twitter guy. I mean, that was, that's yeah. that you guys. It, oh, and then I want to know what Jeremy and Langley smoking <laughs> to call Rick, the voice of reason. <laughs> serious. Yeah. Serious. Come on now. Jeremy and Langley, good guy, good guy. <laughs> okay, John, you, you, you uh, bill yourself as a hockey storyteller. What story would you tell people about Elias Pettersson these days? I want to see some urgency. I haven't seen any urgency. Um, do I think he's hurt? Well, I think there's a difference between being injured and being hurt. Mm. If, if, if playing uh, with, a, with something that's sore... You know, tough it out. Uh, but at the same time, I, I just don't see any urgency out of Pedersen. And is that concerning? Yes. Uh, but it is only four games in. Uh, you, you would like to see him score a goal. You would like to see him sh use. I mean, yeah. he has a tremendous shot. Yes. A tremendous shot. He should be using that more. But I'm, I'm not off the Pedersen bandwagon just yet. Um, I've talked about this at the top of the show that, Lightning beat the Canucks 4-1 last night. And and just and everybody in Vancouver, of course, you know, criticizing the Canucks 0-3 and they, they lose to the Lightning. But I'm watching that game last night, John, and I'm thinking to myself, Vasilevsky had poor numbers last year, the worst of his career. He looked great last night. He's off to a good start. They still have Hedman. They still have Kucherov. They've, they've added uh, Gensel. Uh, they've got Braden Point, maybe the most underrated player in the NHL. Is that window, is there a possibility it's still open in Tampa Bay? Uh, it, it, that's a good question. I, I, the answer is, I think it's still a little ajar. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you know, the one thing that the Tampa had in their Stanley cup time, and by the way, let's remember one of those Stanley cup times was during the bubble. Yes. Um, and, and that's, that to me is a little bit of an asterisk. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but what I would say is that they, Tampa does not have near the depth that they once had. Uh, you know, when remember when Blake Coleman was on the third line with uh, Barkley Goudreau and Yanni Gord? I mean, that was that was at a time when the amount of firepower that Tampa had was exceptional all the way up and down their lineup. Their defense was much deeper, uh, and and in defense of Vasilevsky's last year's number, remember that he missed the first twenty games of the season yep. with back surgery, uh, and you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be you know, 100% in two weeks after back surgery. So it, it did take him time, and I fully expect that he will be back at full power for the rest of the season. John, when I look at the top of the NHL standings uh, this morning, <laughs> it is pretty shocking to see the Calgary Flames at 4-0. and And not only that, but the best goal differential in the National Hockey League at plus nine as well. What is going on in Calgary? Nobody saw this. No, I think they they probably have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because uh, we all we all picked them to be twenty eighth. Yeah, we didn't expect them to be first in the Pacific. Uh, and the other thing is, yeah, you, you do have to give Dan Vladar and and Wolf uh, some credit for what they've done in goal. And at the same time, Rasmus Anderson has really played very well on the blue line. And finally. Finally, Jonathan Huberdeau is playing yeah. like Jonathan Huberdeau. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, when you can put those types of storylines together, albeit for four games, and again, check the teams that they've beaten. You know, they, they, Philadelphia wasn't in the playoffs last year. Chicago wasn't in the playoffs last year. Uh, really, the most impressive victory in my mind was the Sunday night game in Edmonton, where they were able to sustain some some offensive power in the third period and, and beat the Oilers. Uh, I, I still think it's a little early, just as we're, you know, wondering what the heck's going on with Nashville. I think we're wondering what the heck's going on with Calgary, and I just say, hey, it's still October. 
John, a couple of former Canucks defensemen uh, helping out uh, the Maple Leafs in Toronto. Chris Tanev, I'm hearing uh, they've only given up three goals, or, uh, sorry, five goals in their first three games. I'm hearing a lot of people loving Chris Tanev. There's your one of your best uh, defensive defensemen in the National Hockey League. And OEL's on the power play, I think, first, first unit. Uh, Tanev and OEL, how are they doing in Toronto? Well, I don't think anybody would ever wonder how Chris Tanef would yeah. do here. Mm-hmm. Just a, um, yeah. you know, the big question for Chris, and um, you guys can probably fill in the blank better yeah. than anybody else, is how long will he be able to do it for? Yeah. Uh, when will we hear about Chris Tanev missing two or three games because of injury? Uh, he, he throws his body at everything. Um, and if he can stay healthy, then yes, that's a factor for the Maple Leafs. Um, Oliver ekman Larson is, is a, a fascinating one for me simply because when he left Vancouver and got reinvigorated in Florida, uh, he, he got some of that confidence back. He got that ability to move the puck again. And what they've done in, in Toronto and what Mark Savard, who is the power play specialist, put him on the power play, uh, I, I think it's showing a lot of confidence. And, and by the way, not to tie all these things together, you know, there is something to be said for confidence. And I think that that's what EP40 is going through as well uh, in, a, in a really, really tough critical market. And I think that that's something that OEL faced when he was in Vancouver as well. That was an excellent job of tying things to, uh, yeah, together, John. Excellent. We don't We don't mind that at all. Yeah, Hockey storyteller, it says it right yeah, on my there, account. There, there, there you go. Hey, Alex Ovechkin uh, last night gets his 700th uh, assist, just the sixth player in history to, to uh, register 700 goals and 700 assists uh, plus. Do, do we not give him enough credit for being uh, a complete hockey player, at least in the offensive zone? We don't give him any credit. Yeah. We we really don't. I mean, we always we thought he was Cy Young, you know, yep. thirty and three. Yep. Um, yep. You know, but to, that number and when I saw that stat this morning, I was I, I thought exactly the same thing, Donnie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex Ovechkin has been prolific in the offensive zone, and yes, I mean, if you watch the two assists last night, they were yeah. beautiful passes. He he is. He has proven to be a lot better playmaker, I think, than a lot of people have realized. A lot of them are, you know, shots off the pads uh, and the guys pounce on the rebound. But all those years of playing alongside Nick Backstrom and and feeding guys, John Carlson and TJ Oshie on the power play, Alex Ovechkin does deserve some credit as being a playmaker. There's only one voice of reason around here, John, and that's you, the hockey storyteller. (laughs) Thanks for doing this. Hey, by the way, just one quick thing. Uh, John Cooper mentioned it last night after the game, and I've just got to say to all the people who have gone from British Columbia and across the country to go help the people in Florida with uh, Hurricane Helene and uh, and, and everything else, uh, to me that's uh, absolutely magnificent. For Cooper to acknowledge it, a proud BC boy, all those linemen that have gone down there and trying to help everybody in Florida, that's absolutely magnificent, and I want to say thank you. Yeah, said by a proud BC boy, John Shannon. Thanks, John. Well said. Thanks so much. You you bet.